Hey guys, welcome to a BM Formwork video. I'm back. Haven't been filming for a while. Apologies. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to brace up a corner super tight. Uh, this is the best way possible to do it and I'm going to show you. These are a problem area, they can fail and they can look really bad. So we've been developing methods and de developing ways of doing it over the years and this is the best way to do it. Come with me. So just here we got a 4.4 meter high wall. So there's a lot of pressure at the bottom of this corner here. And these, these walls in particular have a specific bolt pattern. And what that means is that's not allowing us to get bolts close to the corner, which we would prefer. The closer we can get bolts to the corner, the stronger the corner is going to be. So we need as much strength here as we can get. So this is our system for bracing up corners. So we have these timbers that we've made up out of a six by four bolts that come through them and they're all tech, tech screwed off to every joist a couple of components to these corners so this is our uh, timber bracket we call it don't actually have a proper name for them yet so as you can see we got the holes drilled through When we've made these, this is just cut on a 45 degree angle. And when we did them, we left a bit of meat here because we tech screw through here so that there's a bit of strength on the corner. And we've got a specific hole pattern. So all these timbers we made up, they're the same size and all the holes are the same so that when we match pieces up on a corner, it all works. So I'll show you the process for putting it up. Tech screw. First thing I do is just check that I, all my holes, I've got enough holes lining up that I can, that aren't clashing with timbers. Uh, so that one clashes, so I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit. And then what we do is we screw it off. But we don't go hard up to the corner. We don't go hard up to the corner, we just keep it back a bit so that when it squeezes, it's got room to squeeze up to. And then what we can do is put some bolts through. These are a high tensile bolt, they can take 30 ton or something of of load um, steel nuts and we need we got steel plates so we put these through So now to put on the second side, we just line this piece up with the same bolt pattern to these. So this is the next step. Now we get all the bolts through. We need to screw this off. Again, we're leaving a bit of a gap. We're not getting this tight up to the timbers. Okay. 
and now we screw off every single timber. So now that it's all screwed off, all the bolts are through, we can tighten it up. So as I do this up, there's a little bit of a gap here. Don't know if you can get it with the camera. Maybe from this side. So watch that tighten as I do this up. And we really tighten these up as tight as you can really. Here, being the bottom of the wall, being the bottom of the wall where the most pressure is, I want to put an extra bar in here so I don't have a hole. So we can either use this hole or I can drill my own. So what I'm going to do is come, might put another one at 500. Same on the other side. And this is how we drill the holes. So the problem with a long bar going through a six inch timber is if the hole's not drilled perfectly straight, this bar ain't gonna go in, especially three or four. So we use this. It cost about $120, but it's well worth it. So what we do is I line it up with the pencil mark I've put in, and it's got these two prongs. So you can tilt the base diagonally and it locks to the center of the timber. And you hold the plate flat. And it drills flat. <laughs> line it up with my pencil line and we drill. Oh, doesn't line up. <laughs> this is the drill in a bit more detail. So if I take this off, you can see how well it's built how well it spins. It's your standard chuck and then it slides up and down on these rails. A decent handle and I mean it's not something we're going to do but you can set the angles you can set a depth stop a uh, really good quality thing and we're just using a 19mm drill bit Something that's worth mentioning with this method, and it's important to note, is you really need to get your wall plumb and braced up on the ends when you do this method, because as you crank this, it works so well and it cranks so tight that you can actually open your wall up 
and particularly on short lengths you can pull the wall out and then you might have a bit of trouble getting the other bits straight and plumb again. Now something we can do as a little bit extra particularly at the bottom the rough guide that I use is for every meter in height that the wall is the pressure and the bottom meter will double so a two meter wall will have double the pressure at the bottom a three meter wall will have four times the pressure at the bottom now that's very rough there's a lot of other factors depends how quick you pour it because the bottom part of concrete will start going off and go hard by the time you get to the top so it doesn't quite work like that but it's a good simple way of figuring it out and make sure that you build things strong enough just as a little bit extra we're going to put some pline you can put it here or you can put it in here which will help the help this either either doesn't matter or if you're really worried you can do both so i'm just going to put it here So a good trick when we're screwing this is off is not to just screw them off as it is, is to open this up a little bit, screw the back. And then when we screw the front, that's going to come around and pull this timber, pull this timber over even more, get it really tight. So screw off all the backs. And then we put one more corner piece here. And that's it, that's how to get a tight corner. This is the internal of that same corner. We got some weird things going on, timber's going in different directions. Again, that's because of this bolt pattern that they have on this job. You'll notice we have a line of bolts down the bottom, two bolts really close to each other through the center and then two close to each other there so basically every ply join 150 from the ply join 150 millimeters the whole way around there's bolts so where there's four close together that means that's the corner of the sheets you can see that throughout and this wall and if I go downstairs I can show you one that we've already poured it's got quite a nice shine to it. So this is what our corners look like from the top. So we mitre the corners and we put this vertical timber right in the corner. We screw it all together so that we keep that mitre nice and tight 